Happy birthday, Evo. Your special day is here. Happy birthday, Evo. I get to love you for another year. Wait, that's kind of weird, but no. Anyhow, it is my birthday, and I am Evo Terra. And this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Everyone to another episode of the Books and Beer Hangout, our quest West. through the realms of all things indie publishing. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and this episode we are looking at a choose-your-own-adventure style of publication with Tim Co, an accidental writer of interactive genre fiction. So Tim, tell us a little bit more about yourself and what it is you are drinking. Hi, I am Tim Co. I'm drinking a... Uh... It's a Revolution Brewing Repo Man Rye Stout. They're a, a small new brewery in Chicago. Just started bottling this year, I believe. It's a mostly stouty, not very rye-y, but I think I'm okay with that right now. Very nice, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. It's pretty good. I'm getting a little bit of an echo. echo. I think it might be from you, Tim. Probably. Okay. I will Turn power through. This down just a little bit, and that'll fix that problem. Jeff, what are you drinking? I am I, drinking a gut shot stout, one of our home brews. Got a few bottles of that left that I found in the back of the fridge. So, so partaking yeah, here. Tasty stuff. I have got the Sintra, the Triple India Pale Ale by Needy, which is wonderful. And I like it. An excellent, excellent choice. All right, Tim. Uh, you use, I don't know why I have trouble with the acronym. I think I just want to go to CYA, the CYOA, Choose Your Own Adventure. So tell us what it is and how you particularly use it. Uh, well, as I'm sure everybody's familiar with the Choose Your Own Adventure books from when at least we were kids in the 80s and 90s, uh, I believe Choose Your Own Adventure is technically a trademarked name, so I will probably get shut down uh, right after this. But pause. It shut down immediately. They are effective. <laughs> Man, those guys wow. are effective. We'll so see if Tim with... comes back. <laughs> you have your select your individual quest adventures. Yeah, this was not part of the adventure we signed up for, Jeff. <clears throat> if you would like to see Tim continue with the interview, please select one. You would like to see him stuck frozen for the next 20 minutes, select two. I think everybody selected two. Shit. <laughs> he did just say that uh, computers were new to uh, Illinois. I don't so. think he was kidding about that. Um, yeah, the VIC-20 always had these problems. I remember back in the day, and your, the tape drive would freeze up. Back, back in the day. So, um... While we wait for Tim to, to, to come back here, um, oh, he just bounced totally, so we'll see if he can. We are yeah. attempting to return Tim to his full and upright position on this show. Please stand by. But what he is doing is an interesting process, as he mentioned. I mean, this was a big thing when we were kids, and I, I certainly enjoyed this particular style of writing, too. He's actually doing it with Google Plus Communities, and he's doing it by committee. So unlike the standard... C Y O A. Yes. Um, this one is he posts a story and then people comment uh, in, in that post and, and pick which the next path should be. He says, Should I do A, this, B, this, C, this? And then by consensus of everybody posting their comments on there, that's how the next one get the, the next chapter gets chosen. So there's not the opportunity to go bounce around, which one of the things I really enjoyed about the books, I guess I can call them by name, the Choose Your Own Adventure books, was you could try to get to a certain spot. This one doesn't work that way. It's actually just letting the committee go through and pick it. So, he, so, so, so he's making it up as he goes along versus the choose your, select your own quest related books uh, that were mentioned previously, where right. they were mapped out and you, you, know, you, you could yeah. work your way through a path. He's making this as he goes. All right. Yeah, he's yeah. Doing it just, just on Google Plus. He's not doing this on a blog or anything else. It's just here's the next no. chapter. Nope. He's uh he has used the Google Plus platform to uh, to really leverage that whole thing. It's uh, he 
He takes a contiguous story and then puts them together after he's done one set, uh, like, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 posts about it. I don't know what the number of posts actually is. And then he tells another story and he starts over, and they're, they're loosely interconnected together. So maybe if he ever comes back, we can talk to him about the plans to loop it all together, or is it just something that it will be just one long story, and he'll take the choices out uh, as things happen. I, I don't know the answer to that question, and I guess we may never know the answer to that question. What's that a choice? See, that's the problem with the Choose Your Own Adventure books and this particular Hangout, is you don't know how it's going to end. You know, what, what, the, what is the conclusion going to be? Yeah, you know, much I, like I, it. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what? I would not be surprised. In fact, I seem to recall hearing that they did something like that. They wrote the first season. It was hugely successful. And they went, oh, beep. Let's make this up as we went along. Oh, in theory, a wild yeah. Tim appears. And he can answer some of these hidden questions that we have. Please stand by. He's back. Happy Anyone? birthday, Evo. Okay, so how did I how did I do? You didn't hear any of that what we just talked about, did you? No, I didn't. No. I hope, it, I hope it was very cruel. It was very cruel and wonderful. We were speculating on on what it is that you're trying to do um, over there with the choosing of the adventures, and we were probably terribly wrong. So we've covered what was going on, but um, I, I am curious. Well, two things. Um, Jeff has a question about contiguous stories, and I have a question about why are you using Google Plus? What, was is that the only place people can get these stories right now? Uh, right now, it is the only place you can get these stories. When I the the very first online choose your own adventure thing that I started doing was back in the days when I was on Live Journal, if you can yeah. believe it. Wow, Live Journal. Speak up a little bit and tell us not about Live Journal anymore, because my God. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Live Journal today is disconnected. I was not living in Russia at the time. Um, this was back uh, in college, actually, and I had a, a Live Journal Pro account, which lets you which let you create polls on posts, which seemed to suit the Choose Your Own Adventure format very well because people could vote only once. Um, I got about four people voting per post, and then the very first tie, I gave up. Wow, you're a decisive <laughs> man. Yes, I, I'm a determined person. Um, nowadays, however, I'm on I'm on Google Plus. Really, I started this right when Google Plus went public, um, when it when it left beta and everybody could join up, and there was this huge influx of people into Google Plus, and I thought now would be a great time to seize this opportunity, and then uh, a lot of people stopped showing up about a week later but now uh, I, it seems to have established its own culture that's really catching on for itself and I, I do know um, a lot of people who participated in this story in these stories originally a couple of years ago and now pretty much everybody in the audience is a complete stranger to me do you have so, an idea of the size of the audience or how many people are, are reading I don't have an idea of how many people are reading. Um, I I hope that everybody who's reading is participating because the whole idea of it is participatory fiction. Um, I would say, depending on on the story, two stories ago, I had about uh, 30 people participating per post, approximately. Uh, the last one was more around 18 or 20. Right now, I've just started a new story about a week ago, and I'm, I'm getting uh, somewhere around like 50 votes per uh, entry, but it'll, it'll trickle off a little bit. So do you run them as actual votes, or do you just look at the comments and kind of tally on them? Yeah, I, I, I have a ridiculously complicated Excel sh spreadsheet that's keeping track of all of the <laughs> tallies. Uh, there isn't a good way to uh, tabulate uh, votes in Google Plus, unfortunately, but I, I, it's it's not that big of a deal. I would I would, I would posit to you that if your assumption is that you are hoping that most people who are reading it are also contributing to it, um, you would be Jeff. What's the word I'm looking for? Probably wrong. <laughs> I okay. 
No. I will guarantee you that you probably only have around 1, maybe 2% of the people who are actively reading it are leaving you to comment. So if you've got 50, you could have 5,000 math. Yeah. yeah 5,000 people. Yeah. Having a hard time hearing you through the weird echo. So, and I and I certainly have a lot of NSA people reading it too. Apparently, we well, all do, Tim. Yeah. We all do. <laughs> seen, through the, seen through that prism. So, how much is this really interactive? Like, do you have a story and you kind of understand where it's going to go, or do you throw something out and then you read the comments and go, "Huh, I hadn't considered that," and the comments actively fuel the future direction of the story. What I try to do, because the way that everybody always read all the Choose Your Own Adventures uh, in physical book form, you would always go through and keep your thumb in the page and read the next section and decide, no, I didn't really want to do that. And then you'd go back and choose the other thing. And uh, what, what you would sometimes see is that you would open a door and there would be a lion behind it and the lion would maul you and you would die. So then you choose not to open it, and you find out that there was ice cream behind the door. And the, the reality of the fiction would change depending on the choices that you made. And that always felt really cheap to me. So I don't have a way to ensure this for my readers, but I like I want everybody to trust me. So what I try to do is I try to keep in mind a the larger narrative that's going on in the story outside of what the readers are seeing on a day-to-day -day basis and let the single character that the readers are steering navigate through a bigger story outside of that character, if that makes sense. So even if everybody chooses to just sit on their ass day after day after day, there's still, you know, aliens that are blowing up the Sears Tower or whatever, and you just choose to see it on the news instead of participating in it. Right. So, so two questions, and we'll wrap things up here. Um, so, first, very, very quickly, how much do you drive the story versus uh, letting people actually make real choices? That's number one. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, I I try not to steer it as much as I actually end up doing. I guess I would say. Um, I, you're all wrong. You're saying, this is what you're saying is people contributing. You should be smarter and do the things exactly. that want, so he wouldn't have to do the bad things. Okay, yes. got it. I think I get exactly what you're saying. And the second thing, and perhaps the most important, is to what end? Why are you doing this, and how are you going to find a way to where you actually leverage that which you've created, or is this it? You're an artiste. I have no idea. Uh, I do have, I mean, <laughs> this isn't something that could ever be published in any other form, and I don't have even you, know. Have you thought about doing choose your own career path for Tim Co? I think maybe that's the next thing. I was going to say, Tim lives this medium like no one else I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would think that it is at least the storylines that you have are rich fodder for something that you might be able to use and put into something other than this weird second person narrative that you've done and just uh, put it out as a, as a true story. Like I'm, I'm kind of curious what the hell's in the bathtub right now, personally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that is definitely something, I mean, at, at least a couple of the stories that I have already finished, uh, I really liked the world that they were in and I would love to see what else is going on there without it necessarily being uh, a character that is driven or even necessarily a single protagonist in a story. Um, the the stuff that I have, it's, I mean, like I said, I'm writing 500 to 1,000 words a day and then publishing it. So it's all really rough first draft stuff. And I really don't have the patience with myself to ever go back and try to turn it into something good. I think you got a, a ripe opportunity for some weird fan fiction here where you do the first draft and let the other fans take over the stories. And, and that would be okay, wonderful. So Final, final question for you, Tim. So yes. I love this. I love this idea. I love this format. I have a background in improvisation, and this really appeals to me. Uh, what advice would you have for or against anyone who wanted to give this a try on their own? It is hell. I end up 
going to bed trying to figure out what's going to happen three days from now based on what I think people might end up choosing today. Um, it, it's very hard. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with a story and also uh, participate with people and let them help me tell it, but I'm the one doing all the work. <laughs> I would say uh, advice for anybody who wants to do this sort of thing is uh, be on mostly be honest with the audience. Don't don't try to cheat them. Don't give them two choices that will result in the same thing because that takes all the fun out of it. The whole point of it is is the interactivity. Sounds like good advice if you're crazy enough to do that. And also don't bother to sleep. Don't do it. <sighs> Crazy stuff. Well, Tim, thank you very much for being on the program today. We managed to power through the technical difficulties, and uh, I can't wait to listen to the way we uh, uh, might have summarized what it is that you do. <laughs> We're probably totally wrong. but I'm terrified. Anyhow, uh, so that's it. The Books and Beer Hangout closes up for the day. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of ePublish Unum. We create workshops, guidebooks, and roadmaps so that authors can cut through the complexity of indie publishing. Ready to get started? Check it out, epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moyarty, my name is Evo Terra. Thanks for being a part of the show. <laughs>